Alex. Merry Chrysler. Merry Christmas. Can't believe it's Christmas right now. Feels like it either. snuck up on us a little bit this year. Yeah, it did sneak up on us. Well, today we got a special holiday episode and we're going to do underrated, overrated holiday edition. I love it. Are you excited for this? Very much so. We'll go ahead and start off with one that I am pretty obviously, I think you can tell what my answer is, but ugly sweaters or Christmas sweaters. Overrated and itchy. Overrated? Yes, dumb. Explain. Christmas sweaters, they like, have you ever seen one that looks good? I'm wearing one right now. I think it looks cool. The Cheers one I wore the other day. Cute. (laughs) Overrated. Overrated. No. I think that the ones that you get from like the grocery store that are the sweatshirts that are even worse material than Gildan sweatshirts, those way overrated when people try to make it a thing. Now, if it's knitted, I think it's underrated because this is a vibe where it's both ugly and cute at the same time. And it's also vintage, which makes it even more cute. So I think that some Christmas sweaters are overrated, but I'm a big fan overall. Looks like I was just persuaded. Well, love Moved to, hear to underrated it. to the quality knitted, knitted. Christmas sweaters. <laughs> All right. Hallmark movies. Very overrated. The narrative is the same every single time. But that's the beauty of it. Is it? The narrative of a football game is the same every time. It's different every single time. (laughs) Is it? (laughs) There's a winner and a loser, but how they get there is different. Whereas in the Hallmark movie, yes, characters are a little bit different, but the narrative is always the same. Sometimes characters are the same. (laughs) (laughs) It's just, I think that it's so fun because they are kind of not good that it makes them good. It's kind of like... They're ugly but cute, like the sweater. It's the same thing that they're not good, but they're good. And it's just a good thing to have on in the background when it's the holiday season. I love putting on a Hallmark movie if I'm wrapping gifts or something like that. That's the creme de la creme for me. So it's just, you know, in the background, though. It's not something you're you're like looking forward to. Oh, now you're watching. Yeah. So you're wrapping presents or watching. I can still look at a TV. Yeah, I mean, but it's kind of just on in the background. Whatever. I like them. (laughs) So they're underrated to you? Yeah. Wow. Or accurately rated. Accurately rated. So one of the ugly sweaters, underrated, and then um, Hallmark movies, adequately rated. Sure. Fair. (laughs) Okay. How about holiday lawn decorations? What kind? Pick your poison. Inflatable holiday. Two thumbs down. (laughs) Overrated. Um, like little mini Christmas trees or Christmas lights I'm, I'm on board for. What about like when people have like reindeer in their front yard? I think it can be done well. I think it can be done very poorly. So depends. Yeah. I think my big, my big beef is with inflatables. Yeah. I really, really do not like inflatables for any holiday. Inflatable bounce house inside of your home or in the back of your home completely fine. Totally normal. In the front? I'm sorry. That's a no for me. Problematic. Great word. Great word. How about eggnog? How do you feel about eggnog? I'm not so sure I've ever had eggnog. You know, I was thinking the same thing. So I I guess so overrated that I don't even care. Yeah. I think that it is when we come down to the holiday flavors, let's go through those. What about gingerbread? Fine. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's not like, oh, I I'm can't not like wait yeah. to have gingerbread. I'm not fiending for yeah. gingerbread, you know? What about like the peppermint? Peppermint's fine. Again, it's like mm. peppermint is also in my toothpaste. Yeah. So then why would I want to drink a peppermint? I don't know. It feels weird to me. Yeah. So it's you know not something I, I desire. Yeah. There's no like holiday drink that I'm like, oh, can't wait to have. I can't wait to have this flavor because it's this time of year when it comes to like Christmas winter time. Sure. There's not a go-to for me personally. So I think that they're overrated. I would say gingerbread is probably the one I would like the most out of all of them. What all flavors are we talking about? So we have we have eggnog. I don't know if that's really a flavor, but that's yeah, like it a is. okay. Like a holiday eggnog, flavor. Gingerbread, peppermint. Is there another one? That's the only ones I know of. There's got to be more. Well, help us out if there's more. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> okay, how do you feel about gingerbread houses then? I think that's a fun little uh Activity. little thing. Activity? Yeah. Yeah, even though most of the time people never eat them, they just kind of get gross and then you throw them away. I don't think they're really meant to eat. Oh. I think they're just for decoration and okay. like as an activity, kind of like um 
pumpkins in in Halloween. Like you're, well, yeah, yeah. You're not gonna eat the insides of the pumpkin. You I can suppose. eat the pumpkin seeds though. We would do that. Could do. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about Christmas music? Um, like Mariah Carey. Sure. Um, overrated. Like, can we get a different song? I, I understand. <laughs> so it's just a, that song is overrated. Well, I mean, it's the only one that people play. <laughs> I mean, what other name another Christmas song? Sing a jingle. Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman. Okay, Rudolph I like that the one. The Red Nose Reindeer. I like that one. All right. What about like Mary? Did you know? The if I'm remembering the jingle correctly, it's fine. <laughs> Just remove the Mariah Carey song. I'm okay. tired of it. I need a different one. What about like uh, when people put out like a Christmas album? Don't care. I really don't care. Yeah. I don't think I've listened to any Christmas music this year at all. Can't say. The last Christmas album I think I listened to was Justin Bieber's. I can remember <laughs> the cover of that one with his uh, Santa hat on. Uh -huh. And it's like this, you know, I remember that. But, you know, that time my life's gone. It, I haven't listened to a Christmas is. album in a minute. Yeah. I don't think we used to put on Christmas music at my parents' old house. Uh, but I do not believe I've listened to any Christmas music this year. Just doesn't hit for me that much. Yeah. I'm trying to think of uh, somebody who's come out with a Christmas album recently, but I, I'm like you, I don't really care. Exactly. What about when people do like a TV show, like a holiday special episode? Like they're celebrating Christmas in the episode? Yeah. Like I love the office oh, Christmas yeah. <laughs> episodes. Those are really funny. <laughs> Those are. Yeah. Underrated. Yeah. White elephant. I think that is fun. Yeah. Especially if everyone follows the rules. Like if we're thinking about, you know, the office episode, obviously Michael didn't follow the rules and then he was rude about someone else's gift. But if everyone knows like, hey, we either have a spending limit or this is going to be just a funny gift that you're getting, then I think it's all in good fun. Sure. I mean – it lends to Michael's character so heavily in that show of it being so cringe. I mean, yeah. his goal is to be as cringy as possible. And it makes it, I feel the emotion as I'm watching that that episode unfold of like, oh my gosh, stop. You have yeah. to stop. You are you are driving me crazy. And so it's perfect. So how do you feel about things like Secret Santa? Secret Santa, ex explain that in depth to me here. In depth. Yeah, in depth. Give me a give me a detailed rundown. So if we were to do one for PD, all the names would go in a hat and then each person would pick someone else and they would be their secret Santa. And so then everyone exchange gifts and you get your Santa ex exposed, I guess. Santa exposed. Maybe exposed <clears throat> isn't the best word, but. I'm down with secret Santa. I think it yeah. could be a good idea. I think it's good if, again, people are willing to participate because if someone's just like, I'm going to go grab something out of my own house that's kind of trashy, then it's not fun. But I think it's the most fun when it's with a group of people that know each other. Yeah. Because then the gifts can be more personable instead of just something that you might throw away as you're leaving the function. Absolutely. How do you feel about gift cards as gifts? If you don't know what to get somebody, I think it's the safest bet. So adequately rated? Yeah, I, I think I'm a fan of it. As long as it's not that like all you get is gift cards. If someone's got a little bit extra to spend or they're not sure, I'm never offended by gift cards because I would much rather you send a $20 gift card than spend $20 on something I don't want. Exactly. What about like a an Amazon or Target gift card? Because that's kind of broad stroke of, you didn't really think about this. You just grabbed an Amazon gift card to wear but someone could, you know, that's the easiest thing to get. Yeah. An Amazon gift card is basically like just giving someone cash. Yeah. How do you feel about cash as a gift? I, I don't. I mean, it, it it it's so interesting to me because I don't have like if someone was to give me cash for a present, I'm like, oh, you suck. Okay, like don't ever try to give me a gift again. You know, <laughs> hopefully grandpa isn't listening exactly. to this. Exactly. <laughs> like my grandfather sends the exact same amount of money on on all the holidays slash my birthday every year, which is totally fine because he doesn't know exactly what to get me. Knows I'll spend it on something that I want. So it is what it is. So I guess I'm I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> you just went from you suck. I don't no, want I'm you to get me a gift to, you know, I'm okay with it. No, I'm saying that I, I don't want, if I, I was to give a response of like, I don't like it because mm -hmm. I would prefer to get something that like someone thought of a specific thing of like, I thought you would like this. I paid attention to X, Y, and Z, which you kind of got me into because, you know, 
six years ago, I would have been like, just give me the cash, give me the gift cards and I'll get whatever I personally want. But now there's much more sentimental meaning and um, I enjoy the process of receiving as well as giving gifts a lot more. Yeah, I think that like with that, I still like receiving people's Christmas lists so I can get an idea or maybe I get one or two things off their list, but then I also can use like what I know about that person to get them something outside of just their list but something thoughtful, not just something that they just don't want. Absolutely. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. How about uh, advent calendars? Those are the things where you get specific things out of the day. (laughs) That would be it. Those things. Those things. Um, I'm going to say overrated. I, so here's my thing. A lot of these like seasonal shindigs, I'm not super with them. Okay. It's just like you're adding, it's a cool little process. I think it's cool for businesses to be able to do it, to create engagement and a kind of a storyline for them. But, um, I don't know. I kind of think there's a little I, I see where you're coming from, where I, again, I wouldn't want to receive like a ton of advent ca- calendars or it's just way too overwhelming when you have multiple, but they're like makeup brands who do them when it's like fun because you're getting a different product each day. We had one that was like one that was homemade, but it was like nice. So it wasn't ugly. And then we would put like just Reese cups or like candy in it. And so we got to like move it each day. And so that was fun as like a family thing that we did. But so as, each of you just got Reese's every day. Yeah. Or like, I mean, little other candy like that. But yeah, we each got to move it one day and to be able to go from there. Is the intention just to build excitement towards yeah, Christmas count Day? Down, get hyped. Got it. Yeah. So I do agree that it's overrated, but that doesn't mean I don't like them. Sure. But I I do think that they, I there are definitely things in my life that I can certainly say are overrated, but I love them. Yeah. I just, you know, creating clarity for sure. So if someone wasn't like Sue hates advent calendars, no one ever think about an advent calendar for her. Send me advent calendars. Um, not send me inflatables. for (laughs) (laughs) Do not send inflatables, please. How do you feel about stockings? I think stockings are great. Yeah. Underrated. I think they're underrated. underrated. I think people don't appreciate stockings enough. Yeah, fill those babies up. Yeah, people put junk in them too. And it's, it's not just like, about socks and underwear. Which is fine. Socks specifically. I put socks on my Christmas list. But I think that people overlook the stocking where it's fun. I like to, you know, gather some stuff up for stockings throughout the year. Just little doodads that you get to put let in me, there. Let me hear five of your favorite stocking stuffers. That I've gotten or that I've given? Both. Both? Well, I don't know if I have all them in all one. off. Well, I will say each year there's always like our favorite candy in our stocking stuffer. And I always appreciate that. Who doesn't love some good freaking candy? Of course. And then normally there is something, again, just kind of thoughtful. So I think last year we all got um, like – things that can go in your dryer to catch extra dog hair. Oh, that's good and that's idea. like a, a thoughtful little fun extra thing. I think we've gotten like lint rollers before. Um, just Travel sh- toothbrushes. Tra- yeah, those were really good and we still use those. Yeah. Um, a few other things like that where it's just that's useful. It's not just, oh, I'm throwing this in here to fill the stocking up. But I think that they're always fun. Yeah, I think they're fun too. Yeah. How do you feel about candy canes? Mm, overrated. overrated. Yeah. I was overrated. trying to link that up with you and you did not say it at the cadence I thought. I don't remember the last time I ate a candy cane. It's been a minute. I don't it's not hard candy like that is not for me. Mm. I don't like stuff being stuck in my teeth. Yeah. It's very annoying. Like um what's another like candy uh candy canes what's another one that's just like like a jolly rancher yeah just having to pick stuff out of your teeth like the visual of having to jam your finger one of alex's big pet peeves it's very annoying (laughs) how do you feel about matching christmas pajamas do your thing (laughs) you know do your thing (laughs) interesting (laughs) but it's not your thing (laughs) you know what to each their own on that but i like to have my own I, i mean we can match 
but it doesn't have to be the exact same. Yeah. Like we can do different colors of the same pajamas or the same clothes for a particular uh, photo shoot, let's say, but to have the exact same thing on, I think looks ridiculous. <laughs> it's funny because I don't know if your family did anything growing up, but we had friends that- Nothing, every- we never did anything. <laughs> In regards to pajamas, of we had friends that on Christmas Eve, they got to unwrap two presents, and one was always pajamas, and the other was a book. Did you not open presents on Christmas Eve? No, never. We did. Like all of them? Do you remember the story about the dictionary? Yeah. Oh, you got to pick one. Yeah, and okay. I thought I was yeah. getting the PlayStation, <laughs> and I was lit, bro. I I had picked out this box, and my parents- You're like, this is the exact size of a PlayStation. My parents literally knew that I was going to pick that box because of the size, and it looked like the PlayStation box. And I'm dancing around before I open this present. I've had it picked out for weeks. And neither of my parents w- cracked at all before opening this. And I'm not kidding you. I opened that box, and then I realized this is not a PlayStation. And I open the box further and realize it's a freaking dictionary. Just what every kid wants. I've never stomped away (laughs) and didn't. I mean, what a spoiled freaking brat. I literally slammed the dictionary down, (laughs) stomped to my room. I don't talk to anybody until the morning. And then Santa (laughs) brings my PlayStation first thing in the morning. And I'm like, what a spoiled brat. Yeah. What a freaking spoiled brat. What a spoiled brat. That's what I say all the time. I should have been reading that dictionary. You should have been. Uh, Yeah, we never did Christmas presents on Christmas Eve. But again, we had friends that would do the the PJs and their matching PJs. And so everyone would be like spending the night there in them and wearing them the next day. And then a book, which I think the book idea is a good one. That would be a fun tradition to put in place of like a present to open on Christmas Eve. As long as it's not a dictionary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we did matching pajamas, I think for two or three years in the past random years just came into play. My mom decided to start it, but we don't have them this year. So it is what it is. Yeah. So now you bring up Santa. How do you feel about Santa? Um, I love the magic of it. I think that it is awesome for kids to enjoy and believe that there is a man wiggling his way down the chimney to drop off this magnitude of presence for them. I love that. I think that it's so just fun and adds to the spirit of the holiday. Um, so adequately or underrated. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell about uh, how your family did Santa? Sure. So we were we were heavy duty. My mom uh, stayed up until the wee hours of the morning to continue this um, shindig. (laughs) And so my mom would make like this presentation of our presence, uh, like how she wanted it for, for pictures. So she always wanted to have great documentation of pictures. We would do cookies for Santa, cookies and milk. And then my mom would go out in the snow in the front yard and stamp reindeer um prince paul's Paul prince. prince i knew you were about to say paul <laughs> hoof prince I don't hoof, probably <laughs> yeah, hoof. okay so she would go out there with the reindeer and she and she would stamp she would them be out there with the reindeer <laughs> yeah she's out there with the reindeer stamping their their hoof prints um so we would see that out in the front yard and then she'd also have like this this sleigh thing to where it looked like santa like slid into the the grass which now as an adult it's like he had to go up to the chimney. Did he get a ladder? Why was that the case? I don't know. Um, but we were like full fledged into it. I really believe Santa was real. I thought the tooth fairy was real. Oh, wow. I'm really exposing myself here, but my mom was like heavy duty into making sure I believed. Um, and so she pulled out all the stops. So were, did you get gifts also like from Santa? Like they were, they were labeled all from, like Santa. from Santa. Yeah. So like we got some presents from mom and dad, but it was mostly from Santa. So interesting. Yeah. I mean, now explaining what your experience was. There was no Santa in my house. Um, It was something that my parents believed that if we were learning about Jesus and then learning about Santa, that if we found out that Santa wasn't real, and I really hope someone doesn't have this blank when they're like kids (laughs) are in the background, Um, Santa's real. Uh, When we... They thought that if we found out Santa wasn't real, that then we would think that Jesus wasn't real because also miracles were kind of like magic to us at that time. So there was no Santa. It was like we had, we even had like, what are those, this might not be the right word, bubshka dolls or whatever, when it's the ones where it's the nestle, like the nesting dolls. 
Nope, not yes, ringing a bell for me. Whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. The nesting dolls, we had one that was a Santa. And so it wasn't that we had no Santa to be seen, but we never had presents from Santa. There was never anything for Santa specifically. Um, it was just don't ruin it for the other kids, basically. Interesting. I'm I'm intrigued to see how we handle this with our own children. I think Santa's like a little bit overrated. Okay. Well, I mean, opposing a I said a little bit. I mean, I said very underrated because yeah. it's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I do think the magic was awesome, but what happened when you found out he wasn't real? How'd you feel? I don't know if I was tripping. I think that I was like in high school. <laughs> oh, in high school. <laughs> I, I don't know how you old go I was. going to college and he's like, why is it Santa <laughs> dropped off my freaking presents? <laughs> Santa, where are you at, bro? I need my presents. I don't see the hoof prints. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old I was, but I don't remember being like traumatized by it. Okay. Well, let me know for anyone listening if you were traumatized when you found out about Santa. Because I, because people always ask like if I feel like I missed out and it might be the aspect of like you don't miss something you never knew. But I also just feel like there was so much joy around the holidays in general. So it didn't feel like I was even missing something when other kids were talking about Santa. Yeah. How about gift wrapping? So last night was one of my first experiences really digging into gift wrapping. Um, I enjoy the process of gift wrapping, but I also think that it's important to the gifting experience of like opening a present. Mm -hmm. So underrated. Yeah. I love gift wrapping. Mm -hmm. It is like therapeutic for me. I ask people if they need gifts wrapped because I do love to wrap gifts and, you know, have that Hallmark movie on. Uh, so I so enjoy it. And I think it's fine for people to still have gift bags under the tree, but it's just, you need to have a majority of things wrapped because if you were to go down and look under a tree and it's all gift bags, that doesn't feel the same to me as going and seeing all the presents wrapped, you know? I agree hundred percent. I think that it should be like a 90-10 split. Yeah, I can 90 agree wrapped, that. 10 bagged. How about sending out a Christmas card? <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy receiving Christmas cards. So I'm going to put adequately rated or underrated. <laughs> but getting like the process of gathering contact information as well as going to get the photos. Now, we have Miguel here. We could have literally done it in the basement and got all the photos taken care of. And then I'm sure there's like services online to where you can just do them and plug them in and play. But um, adequately rated. I, I feel like it's a lot of work. And then we were talking about this the other day of once you get them, how long do you hold on to them? Well, yeah. What's, because what's then, your thought? Because so we did have something for a while that was like something to display Christmas cards on. And so it sat like on that big built in in my parents old house. And so when we got Christmas cards, we would like all put them in there. And then I think like at the end of December, we kind of just threw them all away, which I think that would be a good process. But for us, we don't really have a spot that we put them. So then we look at them and we're like, oh, yay, we got a Christmas card. I like looking at people's pictures and all of that. But then I'm like, so is it mean if I just throw it away now? I don't think it's mean. But then I feel like, bad. You, they spent time and money on it. And then I'm like, oh, cool. If you were to send a Christmas card to someone, how long are you expecting them to hold on to it? Well, I'm not sending a Christmas card to anyone. But if you were? Like I'm anticipating it to be a gesture of this is you know, some people send like an update too of yeah. like what's going on with their family to keep everybody in in the know. So you read through that, you look at the picture. Oh, love them. I'm gonna send them a, a quick note, send them a quick text, say thank you. And then I would expect them to either pitch it or keep it on their fridge for all of December and then be done. That's a wide range there of pitch it after reading <laughs> it and then keeping it on their fridge for all of December. But anywhere in between, don't care. Okay. Well, I just, you know, I've mixed feelings about it. Okay. So how do you feel about real Christmas trees? I think they're a mess and so painfully underrated or overrated. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you heard it here first. He thought they're underrated. Overrated. Get the fake trees and just be happy with it. I understand that it does make a mess and that it can be, you know, a hassle. But I think that it's part of the Christmas spirit. It's part of the Christmas spirit. Yes. And you know what? Alex bamboozled me. <laughs> he lied to me before we were betrothed 
So then he would get me saying, I would love you no matter what, love you till death. And then he exposes to me, by the way, allergic to Christmas trees, so we can never have a real one. Honestly, that may be a legend. When was the last time I was around a real Christmas tree? I don't know. But you're also allergic to like grass and yeah, the outside. Yeah, weird stuff. Let's just expose me to it. You know what? Yeah. Let's just give it a no, whirl. No, actually, let's mental. not do that. It's all mental. Everything Allergies is all mental. are all mental. The only thing that's not mental is cancer. <laughs> That's but it. everything else is mental. Everything's mental. You know, cancer has a mental part, but it's not all <laughs> mental. How do you feel about sledding? I think sledding's fun. Yeah. I would say adequately rated or underrated. I'm a huge fan. Sledding's fun. I don't, where would we go sledding here? Oh, so, well, you could go someplace like, you know, Mad River Mountain. They have like tubing and I think they have some sledding down. But what we did growing up is that where there's all those tunnels, like the bike tunnels, those are a great place to go sledding. Gotcha. So there's also a place over by um, one of the pools that has a pretty good hill. Nice. Yeah. Maybe we'll be the oldest people there without yeah. children. Yeah. I, I enjoy sledding. Which is our, our norm right now. Yeah. It's we're very... just, you know, the creepy people yeah. without children. We're in a very interesting stage of life where <laughs> <laughs> we are like too old to do child things without a child. And yeah. we go to these things and it's like, okay, we've got to kind of, we look a little creepy. Like when we go to play basketball mm -hmm. um, at the middle school and they're like, who are these weirdos? Yeah. They're keeping an eye on us. Yeah. Not wanting their kids to interact with us. Because <laughs> we're so scary. <laughs> if you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. What about carolers slash caroling? I haven't had one come to our door ever. So I, I, I can't even give an adequate score. I think it is crazy for the person to be like, I enjoy this. Yeah. Because it's freezing cold outside. You're singing to people that probably don't want you to be singing on their front door. And then they're standing with their door open, probably not wearing enough clothes to like keep them warm outside. Mm -hmm. And so they're in an awkward place of like, can I just slam the door in your face to at least go get a jacket? But no, I have to stay right here and just listen. It's very yeah. weird. We did it some like growing up in the church and it was like fun. But now as I'm older, I'm like, I don't really want a caroler to come to my house. Yeah. I think that it would be different if like the neighborhood got a notice of, yeah. hey. Like tonight is caroling night. Like people are going to be coming through caroling tonight. Yeah. If you don't want people to come by, just like put something on your mailbox. Or turn your lights off, kind of like they do for Halloween or right. trick or treat, whatever it is. Yeah. Like if you don't want them, then you know, whatever, but that would probably be the most applicable yeah, way to use it. I could agree with that because then people who want to do it or if kids want to do it, it, then they can have fun with it, yeah. but it's not, you know, in people's faces. Right. How do you feel about elf on a shelf? Explain that one to me. I didn't do that. It's like you have an elf and it's like your family elf and then it gets like moved around. Why? Because it's it's magic and Santa, you know, that whole thing. And so the parents move it and it's like a whole storyline and they can make up their storyline. Do, like, do you remember Katie and Hayden, how they had it like in the, like yeah, by the stove and they had that mess that it made. So it's supposed to be like, again, that magic of Christmas and you're moving it around and it's in these different places and it's, it can't be moved during the day. There's all, I don't know all the rules to it because I never did it. So it just moves throughout the night, basically. Yeah. Gotcha. It's like, you know, magic. Interesting. Um, if it's added to the magic for the kiddos, underrated. Every parent I've talked to hates Elf on a Shelf. Why? I I mean, they just say. It seems like a lot to keep up with. Yeah. To create a storyline um, for thir or, you know 24 days Yeah. of you know what this elf is doing. Now, I'm surprised my mom didn't do it because she would have loved that. Yeah. She would have loved creating a story around the elf. And maybe she's listening to this and she's like, dummy, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very possible. Yeah. I, I just... Um, I think it's like a little much, Sure, but I don't know. Cause I've never experienced it. And I've just heard a lot of parents say that they don't like it. Yeah. I think you may get guilted into it from your kids. Yeah. Like your kids are either excited about it or their friend does it. And they're like, where's elf? Where's yeah. the elf on the shelf? And That's like, oh. what Lauren was just saying that she's like, I hate it. But then her kids now have like a monkey that they move around <laughs> because she won't do the elf on the shelf. <laughs> She's like, I have no idea where they got it from, but they that's, that's like part funny. of their thing now. Huh. But she doesn't do it. Mm. <laughs> How about experiences as gifts? I love it. I'm huge on experiences as gifts. So underrated. I, I'm with you. I think, again, especially if it's something that 
the person knows you're going to like. They're not just getting you some rando experience. Then I'm all for it. Yeah. I will opt for an experience over a physical gift nine times out of ten. Yeah, but I would also would be fun if you wrapped it and then I open like a piece of paper, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's what you would do. Yeah, Yeah, instead of just being like, here you go. So this is what we're doing. Yeah. And yeah, And then you don't get the experience of opening any gifts or anything. I'm with you on that. How about New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve. Overrated. (laughs) Let me tell you. Why? I want to be in bed way sooner than that. And I don't know the exact stats, but it has awful stats when it comes to drunk driving. And I just think that first with how many resources we have at our fingertips when it comes to Uber and Lyft and all the different ride share, all that jazz just makes no sense. But I just feel like it. And it's also maybe it's because there's like just so much build up to it that it never lives up to the expectation. I just feel like I've never my most enjoyable New Year's Eves have never been like the typical New Year's Eve. I don't know. I, I've had some really fun New Year's Eve experiences. I don't love going about it that same way any longer. I don't see the super duper what value. What are these fun experiences you've had? Um, I don't how would I define what year would this be? Uh, I mean, it seems like it was before you met me. But. <laughs> well, since since we've been together, I don't think we've celebrated New Year's Eve. Yes, like, we have. In in a capacity of like going out. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know what we did the first year. Like, I have a hilarious story about race. If I can tell that. Yeah, you can. The second year, we were at our house and we spent it with Sam and Cody and we played board games and that was super fun. Yeah, that was a blast. Then I don't know what we did in between, but then we went to and we were home by like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. We went to a speakeasy, but we went early and then we our rule was we wanted to leave by like 1030. And that was, you know, fun just to be out doing something. So the story about race is that race is one of my closest friends. He may be listening to the episode. Hi, race. We miss you. He should have been a groomsman at our wedding, but decided that, us. you know, his professional life of, of being border patrol his was more important. His career was more important than our <laughs> freaking wedding day. But, you know, that's fine. Anyway, we support you. So we were at a, it was a house party and um, we had been very intoxicated throughout this entire evening and race stayed up to continue to drink throughout the night. I had gone to bed and, um, somehow some way race ended up no, no shirt, just his boxers and the local hockey team. There was a semi pro hockey team in Evansville at that time. They had come and race had decided, you know what? I can fight all these guys. Mm -hmm. It's time for me to get into a brawl. And so about three or four o'clock in the morning, this man's outside in the front yard fighting five or six of these hockey players. So that's my story. I don't feel like you enjoyed that, but it's a funny story. I enjoyed it because I can picture race doing that. And then that makes me laugh. Yeah. But then the people listening, I probably rushed the delivery of that, but it's okay. Yeah. But if you knew race, you guys would laugh too. Yeah. Just understand that it was Understand that it was really funny. Had to be there type situation. Yeah. For sure. Well, we're getting to the end here, but uh, what about the traditional Christmas dinner? What is that? I feel like I and I don't even ever recall this, that the Christmas dinner is kind of the same as Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. But that's never how we did it. Well, I guess we my mom said that we did do that when I was younger, younger. But we like turkey and stuff? Yeah. Or like ham. Overrated. Why, why? What did you do for Christmas food? I have no idea. I don't even Yeah, you guys didn't you guys do ham and you're over at your grandma's? Well, I mean, we we had so many places to go for Christmas. I don't really remember ex- like we ate well at every place, but we went to like my mom's parents, then we went to my mom's stepmoms, and then we went to my mom's biological dads, then we went to my dad's parents. So we were just like all over the place. So you don't remember what you ate at all? Yeah, I mean, we ate those foods, I suppose. Okay, so I'm guessing you think it's overrated. overrated. Okay, I, that's all I needed to know. I guess we did it when we were younger, but then we decided, and so rightfully so, that we didn't want to do the whole hoopla, the whole song and dance. And we're just like, let's think about food that everyone likes in our family. Which is what? So, so then, now we do 
steak and baked potatoes for Christmas. Easy peasy. Everyone enjoys it. And then also everyone in my family but me does one of the Cokes like in the glass bottles. That's like part of the tradition as well. But it's so nice because it's not this whole thing of someone cooking for forever. It's food that everyone likes and then you're done. Yeah. So I think that the traditional Christmas dinner, whatever that's labeled as, is also overrated. I think you should just do whatever tradition that you personally enjoy. Like if you don't enjoy the traditional food, you shouldn't eat it. Yeah, I agree. You shouldn't feel like because it's Christmas, we have to eat this. Like if people are all whining about eating that particular food, just change it. Yeah. Well, how about what are your thoughts on like having a white Christmas? Like it's snowing and everything? Yeah. Underrated. I think it's amazing. I think it's magical. I think it's awesome when it just pours snow and you just get to cozy up with your family, watch movies, drink hot chocolate, put on some new clothes that you just got from uh, Christmas presents and just enjoy. Yeah. I love that. Uh, Me too. Well, that's all I had on the list. Is there anything else that you wanted to chime in? Anything you thought of while we were going through it? No. All right. Well, how about this? Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? I don't think so. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) well for conversation's sake i think it is (laughs) oh my goodness i don't know why i think it is but i think it is if you guys are watching on youtube i would love if you commented down below like a holiday tradition that you do or your favorite holiday food or your favorite holiday movie i personally would be very interested to know and then of course would still like to know if you guys were traumatized after finding out about santa um, or any other opinions you had on these topics we went over i'm very interested in your thoughts my favorite christmas movie is it's a wonderful life (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mocking me on Christmas. I'm not mock- on That's Christmas. my favorite movie. That's my favorite movie. Shut up. I love that movie. I do love that movie. <laughs> it's one of the best movies of all black time. black and white. Me too. George Bailey. It's George such Bailey. a good movie. I love George Bailey. Me and him are... It's a Wonderful Life is the number one Christmas movie. And then the next two after that are Muppets Christmas Carol and... White Christmas. The Grinch. The Grinch is in the top five for sure. Okay. But those are the top three. And if someone else says Christmas Vacation, (laughs) that movie gives me anxiety. (laughs) Even just thinking about it, I just got anxious. What makes you so anxious about it? I I can't even get into it. I don't even think I've watched the whole movie because I just can't handle it. Wow, get that anxious throughout the entire thing. You haven't even watched the whole movie. Is that Clark Griswold? I don't even know. I think that's the main character. Yeah, if that's the sure. movie, well, does it is that an anxious driving movie? It's, a, it's I mean, it's it's a typical Christmas for people. It's it's a lot of anxiety. It's a <laughs> lot of stress. It's a lot of frustration. It's a filthy real tree on the top of a car, ruining it with the tree sap. Merry Chrysler, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening all year. Hope you had an incredible holiday season. And we'll catch you next year. See you next See year. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>